So the hard drive in your computer just doesn't have enough storage space for all of your music, pictures, videos, and other files. Or maybe your hard drive crapped out on you. Or maybe you've decided that it's high time to upgrade to one of those new solid state drives you've been hearing about. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you what all is involved in installing a new hard drive in your computer. So first things first, since you're wanting to install a new hard drive in your computer, we are of course going to need to buy ourselves a new hard drive. Here I have a 250 gigabyte Samsung 850 Evo solid state drive, and I'm going to begin this installation as you probably might have guessed by first removing the drive from the box. As you can see here, Samsung has been so kind as to include in the box an installation guide, a CD with some software that I don't plan on using, some warranty information, and then the thing we shelled out our hard-earned cash for, the drive itself. Now that we've got all that out of the way, let's get on to what it is we need to do to get this thing up and running on our computer. As you can see here, we have two different connections on our drive. This one here is where you'll plug your power cable onto and this other one is for the serial ATA cable which is the cable that carries all of the data back and forth from your hard drive to your motherboard. Now before we get to the fun part and open up your computer you should unplug your computer from your surge protector or why not just go ahead and unplug the entire surge protector from the wall. Now before you go touching any of your internal components make sure to ground yourself out by either using one of those fancy anti-static straps or you can just do what I do and ground yourself out by touching a metal part of your computer chassis. Okay, now that we've got all of that out of the way, let's get on with the video. When you open up your case, it should look something like this. Now, not all cases are configured exactly like the one I have here, but this should give you a good idea of what to do. As you can see here, my hard drive cages are located here, and they have these nifty little sleds that just slide right on out onto which I can mount my hard drives. These are set up to be able to mount both traditional 3.5 inch drives as well as 2.5 inch drives. Now, your computer probably doesn't have the same style of drive mounts, but due to the simple fact that you're planning to do this install yourself and are now watching this video lets me know that you're confident and competent enough to be able to figure out what you're going to need to do to get this installed in your particular case. As for me, I had some mounting screws that came with my case, so I simply screwed the drive onto the sled and then popped it into place. Now the next thing we need to do is get this drive hooked up to our power supply. My power supply is mounted right here at the bottom of my case. Yours may be on the bottom like mine or it may be mounted at the top depending on the layout of your case. You should have a bunch of different wires however coming out of your power supply going to all of your different components. Now to power your new hard drive, you're going to need a free SATA power plug, which looks like this. It's got this nice little L shape to it, making it impossible for you to hook it up wrong. Once you've found your SATA power cable, you may need to do a little rearranging of what device is using which plug so that you can reach your hard drive. but. Hopefully that will be relatively simple for you, and then once you get it all sorted out, you can just go ahead and plug the power onto the corresponding pins on the back of your hard drive. Now that you've got the power connected, you're ready to move on to the data cable, also known as your serial ATA cable. Serial ATA cables usually come with your motherboard, but if you're swapping a new drive for an old one, you can go ahead and just reuse the one off of your old drive. However, if you're buying a new drive to add to your system and you don't happen to have a spare SATA cable lying around, then you can simply just go online and buy one. Monoprice.com currently has 18 inch serial ATA 6 gigabit per second cables for 61 cents. So not a too big of a deal there. Okay, so your SATA cable should look something like this. Thanks to that nice L-shaped connector, it is impossible to connect this incorrectly to your drive. All you got to do is plug one in onto your drive and the other end simply plugs into one of your serial ATA ports on your motherboard, which are most often found right here. Okay, our next step is to go ahead and plug our computer back in and fire it up. 
If you're installing your operating system like Windows onto this drive, you want to place your operating system CD into your CD drive and then follow the on-screen prompts. And the rest of this video doesn't really apply to you, but if you're using this drive for additional storage, then there's one last thing you're going to need to do in order to utilize your newly installed drive. As you can see here, when I go into Windows Explorer, it shows my C drive, which I have Windows installed on. It shows my DVD drive. It shows my Patriot flash drive. But my new hard drive that I just installed is nowhere to be found. Well, that's because there's one last thing that needs to be done, which is to initialize the drive, and then it'll be good to go. To do this in Windows 8, go down to the Window button at the bottom left-hand corner of your screen, and right click on it and then from the list that pops up select disk management and at that point the disk management window should pop up another way to do this that I'm pretty sure works in the other older versions of Windows is to go to Windows Explorer right click on my computer or in this case in Windows 8 it's called this PC click manage then click on disk management at which point the disk management window should pop up. If it gives you this little info window like I got here, click OK. Then on the list of installed drives, find the disk that says unallocated. Right click on that and select new simple volume, at which point the new simple volume wizard will open up and you simply just follow the on-screen prompts to set your partition size if you want to partition the drive for some reason. Um, you assign a drive letter, uh, you assign a name to the volume and all that good stuff and once you're done with all that stuff you just click finish. Now when you go into Windows Explorer you will see your new drive all ready for you to open up and use for all of your data storing needs. I hope you guys found this video informative, that you enjoyed it and you learned from it, and that you're now ready to go out and install your new hard drive in your computer. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. If you guys have any questions or comments for me, please put them in the comments below, and I'll do my best to answer any questions that you might have. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll catch you next time.